Where's your red lipstick at? What? <sighs> okay, so we're gonna try to fix this Spartan roof today. At least one of the holes. And uh, it's gonna be our first time using a rivet gun with buck rivets, aluminum buck rivets. Prime example of what you don't do to patch an aluminum trailer roof. Number one, you don't use steel, it rusts. Number two, you don't use tar, blackjack, it's for a residential roof. And even then there's better products for a residential roof. Get the brittle, doesn't work. And number three, don't use sheetrock screws. Those are for sheetrock. So this is kind of cool. We got some screws out, pulled this patch off. Don't be fishing from a boat. You can only fish from the bank. Whew. So we got the rest of the metal off and they inflated really well with this plastic garbage bag. And here we are, it's just cleaned up with the DA. And now we have to determine what we're gonna do. So we have this panel that we're gonna make a roof patch out of. We do have this curvature of the roof that we're gonna have to deal with. But my intent is to start here on this line, bring it over both riv rivet patterns here, and bring it down to here. I really don't need to bring it down to here, but I think it's gonna look better because that way that material looks like it was supposed to be there. And to kind of get an idea, on the size of a panel we need. I'm gonna place this kind of semi-rigid aluminum uh, yardstick ruler. And I'm just gonna kind of rotate with the curve. And try to determine how far up we want it. We're gonna cut this piece of aluminum at 27 and a quarter. I'm fixing a hole where the rain gets in. My mind from wandering. So we're gonna measure up 27 and a quarter. Make a mark. And uh, what I have is drywall square, which gives you a perfect 90. So we're gonna trust that. We're gonna make sure that this edge is straight up against that plane there. Make a mark. Electric cheers. So here's our panel. And uh, we're just gonna try to test fit it here. See how it looks. I made the panel this size because, well, number one, these were already stump sheared, which makes a lot cleaner line than my electric shears to this width. And when you're on the ground, and you're looking up at this, I really want, uh, I want it to look like it's not a patch. I want it to look like it was supposed to be that way for whatever reason. Now, one thing that we have determined we're gonna do is that we are going to spray the whole entire roof with spray and bed liner. It's going to be colored. We're thinking teal right now. And uh, the guy that I contracted to do this is in Redmond, and he's going to put it on three times thicker than the spray and bed liner you see in most truck beds. And what that's going to do is a couple things. It's going to be extremely waterproof, and it's going to give it a texture and hide a lot of the imperfections that we have going on here. Uh, so I'm not really worried about uh, the holes so much as I want these lines to look consistent and right from the ground. So here's our sheet and you can see as I'm trying to push this down here and try to force it to this radius, it's kind of popping up up here. So we want to relieve this area or I suppose break it a little bit to where it's going to fit that curve a lot better. That way when we uh, end up riveting it, it's going to not have so much force and hopefully sit down better. And to do this, 
uh, I got a really special tool that I'm about to show you. Before I show you the tool, the very special tool, we got to try to mark where we think we want this to be bent. So I'm going to try to find the center of what this curve is right here and just mark it on the sheet. So I line the sheet up where I think it needs to go. And I'm just, I'm just trying to get an idea. So what I'm doing is I'm marking one big line kind of where I think the center of it is. And then I'm going to kind of mark where I think it needs to end. Take this drywall screw. And I'm just going to try to mark a straight line across it here. I'm not going to try out. I'm going to do it. Here I go. And maybe at the top of the curve. We know where the bottom is. There's our special tool. Just hanging out in my front yard. You can buy these from uh, Snap-on for about $3,300. <laughs> the Harbor Freight version is only $300. This radius is probably about a six, seven inch radius. Uh, we need the radius of our tool that we're making <laughs> to be a little bit less than the radius of the Spartan roof because we need to over bend it to try to get that curve. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take our lines. We know that this is kind of our center radius line here. Here's the upper one. And we're gonna make that parallel this board here and with the log and then we're able to just it's aluminum so it's soft you're able to just kind of bend it around it release it go down a little bit further kind of shove it down make sure the line is still parallel and you can just kind of work yourself around that log get that radius Starting to get it. Not too bad for this backyard manufacturing we have going on. It's not perfect. Didn't say it was going to be, but it does have the radius that we need. This will this will rivet in. I'm pretty sure. Nice and tight here, but. It also just now kind of just bends down real easy. I'm not putting a lot of force on here. And it forms right to that roof line. So once we start riveting this together, I think it's gonna be a nice patch. It's gonna look nice. Before we start drilling through this, we're gonna scribe a line so we can make our rivet line look pretty. We're gonna do this around all four corners of this because we're gonna rivet right around that perimeter of this patch. So what I've determined is that the spacing is two and a sixteenth on most of these ribs up here. There's some that are closer, but we're gonna go with two and a sixteenth. So what I've done is I've done a starting hole right here and I've measured across two and a sixteenth all the way across, spaced them evenly. Put the auto punch above it, push down. What that does is it leaves a divot that we're now gonna be able to drill out. Okay, this is a, a new tool that I've never used before. They're called cleat cos. What happens is you have different sizes. This one's for an eighth inch, and you have these pliers here. And what you do is you put the cleat co into the cradle there, and as you push in, this rod comes out and it thins out up here. And what these do is it's gonna be able to hold our patch together while we rivet it. That way it's not moving on us. So what I've done, I've already drilled through the Spartan. And I've drilled through this patch panel. This is our first hole. We don't really wanna get up ahead of ourselves here. So we're gonna take the cleat co push in on it, we shove that through, and when we release, that's a temporary fastener. 
what we're going to be able to do now is where our dimples are from our auto punch, we're going to go back and drill these out and we're going to put cleat codes through it so it holds it nice and tight. And what we can do as we go, when we do decide to remove this, you go right back in, you pop it back out, you throw a rivet in there, and you rivet it like Rosie the Riveter did. Now that we have all our Clecos in, we're going to take them back out and we're going to run this tape here. It's butyl tape, it's like a putty. Um, I think I mentioned this before, but we're going to spray in bed liner, uh, kind of a Linex type deal, the whole entire roof. And that's going to seal it off, but we might as well give it some double protection. I believe this is what they used originally when they put all these panels together. I already ran four rivets. There's some finesse to learn here. There's definitely some finesse to learn. You can overdrive them, um, which ends up kind of insetting the rivet into the aluminum. But here's a basic process. We have a rivet gun and we have a bucking bar. What you end up doing is you put the head of the rivet right here this behind the rivet with the material that you're riveting together in between obviously and then you're able to mushroom out the back of that rivet by hitting it here we're gonna try one you first take a, a, a clico out you grab a little baby buck rivet little guy you take the bucking bar and you get it behind that piece there. This has different different shapes too, so you're able to kind of hook in behind it if you need to. This one's a pretty tight location, so it's gonna take me a minute without seeing. It's kind of working by braille here. You take the tip here, which is kind of coved, matches that buck rivet, and you wanna be on that rivet pretty square there it went here's some other examples here see that one I overdrove it the first one I did that one uh, probably didn't go onto it real square so the edge of that uh, rivet gun kind of indented the metal around it and that one's probably pretty good yeah. I'm gonna pull the Clico out Clico stands for uh, Cleveland Tool Company. It's a little bit of history you didn't want to know. Okay, I'm going to drive the rivet in so it lines up. There it goes. Can you get behind it? Can you get the sharp end into it somehow? I think that's it. Okay, ready? And remember folks, you can do it. You can also hit the subscribe button. That'd be cool.